Hi, welcome to Punchline Talks, the business breakfast briefers. I'm Mark Owen, and each week I invite a panel of business and civic leaders to review the morning newspapers, find out what's happening in their own individual business and their own individual business sectors, and finally, what's caught their eye in this week's Punchline. Before I start, I'd just like to thank our fantastic sponsors, Hayeswoods, Accountants and Business Advisors, and they provide me with great coffee every week as well. If you like the show, please like, share and subscribe. Well, let's introduce to the panel. We've got Councillor Tim William. He's the ex-leader of the Forest of Dean of De- De- District Council, and he's also the councillor for Berry Hill. We've got Heath Gunter, CEO of Cheltenham Bid. We've got Ian Mean, Director of Business West and ex-editor of the Citizen Echo and Western Daily Press. And finally, never last and not least, Sam Holiday, Business Development Manager for the Federation of Small Business for Gloucestershire and the South West of England. Okay, let's see what's making the headlines today. I'll just quickly share my screen, courtesy of the BBC. Here we go. We've got the I. UK warns new rules needed to tame AI. The Financial Times. BT plans to kill 55,000 jobs this decade. The Daily Mail. Is this the start of the great AI jobs bloodbath? The Sun, Saturday night takeaway or taking away, Ant and Deck are calling it time after 20 years. I've never watched the show myself, so I've got no idea what it's about. The Guardian, fresh sanctions against Russia as PM seeks to rally support for Kiev. What caught my eye in the left-hand corner here really is council tenant faces 350% rise in energy bills. The Telegraph, net zero drive will add £120 to energy bills. The Daily Star, uh, why oh yeah, under cracker sales up 45%. This is a story about early in the Haggard, Hallard, Hallard and his amazing underpants. <laughs> and the Daily Express, confident Rishi, RBPM for, t- for years. And the Metro, 10 billion dirty tricks. Your foot the bills for sewage spills. The Times, UK re- uh, reliance on foreign nurses at critical level. And the, the Mirror, Mummy, Am I Gonna Die? A story about dangerous dogs. That's what's making the headlines today. Courtesy of the BBC. Okay, let's start with you today, Sam. Thanks ever so much for joining us, everybody. What have yeah, you picked up? Yeah, thank you, Mark. I mean, we're actually, it's a story that about led on about three of your, of your newspapers there. Um, and that's about AI, and um, it's an interesting stuff in the Times, interesting stuff in the AI, including um, probably the um, most bizarre quote from somebody who said that this isn't hyperbole. This um, hyper, this non-hyperbole quote is, it is not hyperbole to say that if this goes wrong, it could lead to the end of civilization as we know it. That's Matt Hancock. Maybe not the most credible of people, but that has got to be the most ridiculous quote. But, but it, it is a serious point, because BT announced yesterday 10,000 jobs are going immediately because of, of what they can do with AI, and that might lead to 50,000. And that's led to Rishi Sunak commenting about this in Japan and talking about the dangers of AI. Now, AI, I think, is is incredible. Um, and, and I, I, for example, I've got a couple of Alexas around my uh, house. I, I'll probably be even saying that on this screen to set some of these people off. It's the most astonishing piece of technology. I've no idea how it works. And it, and when it works really well, it's a, it is incredible. But what worries me is, how far it'll go. Now, you mentioned that both Ian and I are both um, former newspapers editors, you're a magazine editor. There are already newspaper articles and so forth being written by AI. But mm. do you know what? Last night, I mean, I'm, you, you, you're you probably well aware I'm a football um, a man. And just stick me with this. There was the most remarkable football result happened last night. It was a two-legged match. Sheffield Wednesday were losing 4-0 after the first leg. That means the game's over in effect. If you're not a football fan, that's over. Second leg, they managed to overturn that. Now, an AI could write a report about that, the facts, the figures, the goals, when they went in, but you'll never convey the emotion, the the, the agony of that Peterborough fan who's seen his, his lead overturn and all that kind of stuff. And, and I do think that there's a danger that, you know, in, in this desire to get to technology, not only we're going to lose jobs, but we're going to lose a certain amount of our soul. And, I, and yes, Matt Hancock's quote is a bit bizarre, but, you know, I think BT said yesterday that AI will be as big as the Internet. Now, when you think of the world changing effect the Internet has had on all our lives, it's something that perhaps we don't talk about enough. You know, I think there's a there's a tendency to think of AI as being, a you know, for boffins and it's all a bit. But every single person who says, I'm not interested in AI that owns an Alexa, look how good that is. Look what that's done. Look at the impact that's going to have on your life. So 
I think this is a good, I'm glad that the story has now been raised because it's going to affect business. It's going to affect us all as individuals. And, and my fear is that just like the internet, for all the good that's going to come with it, there's going to be that stuff that's going to come behind that won't be so good. And, and the idea that newspapers, I know that some people will mock this and say they would be anyway, could be written by robots. Then you know, get no emotion, you get no opinion, you get no diversity of opinion. And that's frightening. So I think it's, I'm pleased this story's on the front page. It, the impact is enormous. Okay, thanks ever so much for that, Sam. And that leads us very nice over to Ian, actually, because obviously an ex-editor as well on papers. Uh, I've been looking, I've been following this story quite, quite, uh, quite wor worryingly. I, I totally agree with you, Sam. My big worry, my big worry is, is the Terminator films. You know, I mean, who's to say they just can't take over? Not be gone in. What's your view, first of all, about well, the media and and the AI and and then your stories? But first of all, um, yeah, agree with everything Sam says. There's an interesting piece in the Times here about artificial intelligence from Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. They, of course, were the uh, people who exposed the President Nixon in 1974 over Watergate. And what they're saying, AI will not stop investigative journalism. And it sort of leads on from what um, Sam was saying a bit. You know, a lot of stories about at the moment about phone tapping, hacking, whatever, the end of the day, good journalism is about investigation. You don't do that at the drop of a hat or a turn of a switch. And if you look at the Daily Mail leader this morning, they make the point that they're, it, you know, we've got to watch this. You've got to regulate it. And uh, the eye, as you've flashed up a, a warning on that, there needs to be rules over it. But the fact is it creates opportunities. I remember something like, 26 years ago, being in a being asked by Lord Rothermere uh, of the mail group, um, we want you to look at uh, online and talk to all the editors. Uh, I went to see editors and they said, forget it, and it's not going to happen. What's happened? It has happened. And this is the same situation, but the key of everything in any information messaging is the content you know robots do not investigate people and do not find out issues but ian the big problem is that these robots can write false fake copy they can already make you and i look like somebody else doing something else doing something wrong what's to say you couldn't have in the future um you know rishi standing in front of a tv saying stuff that he didn't actually say appearing on nothing internet, nothing at all nothing at all, all but then, all written by robots yeah he's warning that's the front page lead which you showed in the eye uh, in the eye uh, uk wants new rules needed to tame ai but personally i think it's an opportunity like everything online oh we don't we're not going to do that never but what about What's the it? what about the jobs in what about the jobs it could well place I mean, you know it could get you're talking fifty five thousand jobs going at bt yeah i can see that but uh I'll give you an example uh we booked um a uh, an appointment with ovo to look at our uh, uh monitoring system something like four months ago they're coming on monday you know, and when you start talking to people like this, utility companies, it's what's happening now even, isn't it? You know, in a minor way, we get these very glib messages. So I think it's an opportunity, but it can be pretty dangerous. And also, young people are being brought up with this. This is something that they're going to be learning about and feeling, oh, this is this is the way to do it. Yeah, I, I, I could see that as well. Actually. Whether it's a, a, a university dissertation of 10,000 words or or a short story about what they did yesterday. OK, thanks ever so much for that view. It comes over to Heath then. Heath, what have you picked up from the papers? Is it uh, and, and your view very quickly on AI, do you agree with the rest of the panel so far? Yeah, I think it's, it's something that we need to um, look at and, and watch. Um, <clears throat> On the job side, I think it's actually going to create quite a few jobs. If you think of what social media has done, 15 years ago, you didn't hear, you wouldn't even know what a social media manager was. 
social media executive, um, social media marketing companies, and just think of what that industries, those industries are doing at the moment. So there is potential there. Yeah, you might lose 50,000 jobs on one side, but it will create uh, jobs on the other side. Um, so, but it's it's scary what AI can do, um, and it's definitely something that the governments need to need to um, look at. That leads me nicely into a story from the Guardian um, about the state of Montana uh, banning TikTok, um, mm. and it's it's really interesting because obviously over the last couple of years TikTok have, has taken over um, social media by storm, and a lot of businesses are looking at using TikTok as part of their marketing strategies. Um, obviously, there's two elements to the story. It's freedom of speech. Um, should people be able to use a platform um, and, and, and spread their views? And also data protection. So the main reason why Montana is banning it is because of data protection and uh, surveillance by the, the Chinese government. Um, and that's what they're concerned about. Um, we've seen the UK government ban TikTok from government employee phones. Um, and it, I think it's something that we, as a consumer, should be looking at. Um, and it might be something that's brought in either in the UK. So it's, it's quite interesting to monitor what's happening in, in Montana at the moment. Oh, totally, totally agree. Uh, do you use TikTok in the, in the marketing for uh, Cheltenham Bid? We don't, no. We use um, Instagram and LinkedIn as our, our main um, channels. Um, we're quite a small team, so we can't be everywhere all the time. It's funny you should say that. That's exactly it. You cannot be on every single platform. You have to find yeah. the one that works for you. Uh, anything else for the papers? Very quickly, Heath. Um, there's a couple of stories from Punchline, which I've, um, I want to talk about later on. So. We, can say, we can save that. Don't worry. Don't worry. That's that's great. Thanks ever so much for that. Tim, let's go over to you. Well, as very far very as, quickly, um, your your views, Tim, on, on, on AI. Well, you know, I come from a political world. So I welcome an input of intelligence of any kind, to be perfectly honest with you um, sometimes, Mark. Um, I think that would be... But no, I understand. I think I think for me, the jobs issue is, is probably the key. We need to make sure that people aren't are going to gain from, from developments, aren't we, rather than lose out. And I think that, that's what's important. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. What have you picked out for the papers then, please? Well, tell. this has been in a number of papers, and I'm, I'm treading a thin line here because I know I've got three editors, or at least four editors, and it is in a number of the press, and it's this phone hacking story that, that isn't going away. It's a major thing. Oh. Seems to be centering on some of you, I think, is very abhorrent, Mr. Morgan, um, and all that in his ingenious and daily mirror, but that, that's another matter. Um, but in recently in my time at local government, I have to say, I've seen a change in, 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 in journalism. And and I really and you now Mark, I think what you do is fantastic. And and what Ian used to do is fantastic. Proper investigative journalism. What we have now is online social media clickbait journalism that actually is just there to get people to read adverts. And journalists these days don't care really what the headline is as long as people are clicking on it. And if you're involved in that, if you're the subject of that. It can lead to some quite vile abuse and and misinformation being put out there. We, we've we've had it. I, I can say about it now. The stuff that we had that was put out there on 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 some of these these media platforms about us hiring a you know a, a head of paid service, something we had to do. The costs were actually minimal compared to what every other councillor. It got us the most horrendous abuse online. Just because of the way that it was depicted on that on that on that media outlet, and for me, I think something really needs to be done about that. If we're going to continue having proper journalism, make it proper journalism. Report the facts. Otherwise, we're just going to end up with a social media attack. The trouble is, Tim, to report politics, it's it's expensive. Because you've always got to get the two sides of the story, and this is something that we are trying to do here. Yeah, and I, I can only do it. I can only do it with the support of Hazelwoods and advertisers and and Chant and Bid or anybody that supports Punchline that actually pays for the advertising, pays for the sponsorship. I can then pay for a journalist to find the two sides of the story. So even if we get, a, say, a press release from the Liberal Democrats, 
Yeah. Then we've got to go over to the Tory party when they're attacking them and get their view of it. You can't just print their press release. And that all takes time. Yeah. The trouble is with the media nowadays, it has to be fast, it has to be quick. And and that inve- that investment in that time is what's lacking. They don't have any staff. We've got six journalists sitting on it this morning. So, you know, six. We've probably got more journalists working on Punchline yeah. than any other media at this at this particular. I'm not I'm not, I'm not just saying that. No. That's and those things take time. They take an investment, but we can only do it with with thankfully with the support that we get from our from our clients. Yeah, no, I, I understand that, but from, from my point of view, I, I want people to be wanting to get into local politics. I want people to be want to get involved. And and we saw in these elections, parish and town councils not being contested because nobody's coming forward. And mm-hmm. I think that there is a doubt. People see the abuse. People see the nonsense that people write on these places. And I wouldn't want my lads to get involved in it now because I know what I've been through. And, and all right, there's, there's an element if you put yourself up for it, you're going to take it. I, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. I don't think that's true. Yeah, you, you're, you're open to account. You've got to be open to account, open to what you do, and have those decisions justified. But not, not, yeah, not. I, not being funny, I think there is a big question about democracy itself. Is is at the core of all this. You are right because you will not attract the right people to stand in, in, for councillors if you have this. I'm going to I'm going to bring Ian back in and then okay. Sam back over to you because obviously you both work in media. If you don't mind, Ian, what's your take on it at the moment? You used to be the editor of the series. You must look at it now and go. Yeah, uh, Tim. Tim's right. I mean, um, he's covered it very well, but um, most of the. Uh, the stuff produced today by my old papers, Bristol Everywhere, is clickbait. Uh, there's no, there's very little checking. I'm astounded. You know, two of the basic tenets of an editor to me uh, were trust and accuracy. Mm. If you didn't pass those tests, you shouldn't run anything, knowingly anyway. And uh, I'm afraid uh, t- Tim is right. Um, but we've got to, you know, that's why I support what you're doing, uh, because we've got to keep having a go. You know, when I was in Italy on holiday, I saw the thing um, about Jim uh, dying. My immediate reaction was, I know the guy, I will comment on it because I want to. It's accurate. It's immediate. But I'm a, I'm a news junkie like Sam is. You know, we've got bloody four TVs in the house going at the moment with Sky on. and My wife's the same. We're we're brought up in it and we feel it and we're interested. I'm interested in issues. What's the issues here? Not clickbait. You know, man bites dog is, is the old adage, you know. But what are the issues people are concerned about? Okay, right. Thanks, thanks, Ian. Just very quickly, Sam, as we're talking. Yeah, paper. I mean, there's so many others. We, we, we could talk all day, as you know, but there's just one point I would make but about social media and its disadvantages. Ian and I, I mean, I cherished my letters pages in every newspaper I was involved in. I took personal control over them. And unless there was a name and address at the bottom, it didn't go in. Um, yeah. Unless I had, there was a really good reason and people would explain that to me. On social media, I could call myself a million different names and say whatever I like without any comment. <laughs> If I printed a letter with the name of someone that libeled someone, I would be sued, they would be sued, end game. Social media is 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 the wild west, I'm afraid. And for all its joy, and I follow Twitter endlessly, I, I'll give you one very quick example. I had a meeting some time ago with, with a, a female political leader, I won't say who, and I just went onto their timeline to see whether she'd mentioned that I had the meeting. My jaw dropped when I saw the abuse she was getting about this, that and the other, some of it political and you think well someone's making a political one it's some of it personal horrible stuff and i don't care which party they represented nobody should put up with that and like tim's saying i know people who love politics and i say to him why don't you stand for council says you've got to be kidding all that uh, stick i wouldn't do it uh, well it's the same i probably would imagine that Ch- chum and bid gets as well a lot, a lot of stick if i don't do this don't do that and people write in i mean this is why we don't have a response mechanism on punchline where people could just fill in their own crap you know, it's one of the things. I get letters, of course we do, you know, and um, and, and thankfully I can filter them out and the rest of my team don't see any of them. So, but Heath, do you get, do you get stuff as well? Do you get some bad, bad um, experiences? Yeah. 
Sorry, your sound's gone. Your sound's a bit dodgy today. Okay, we'll come back to you, Heath. If you maybe just click out and come back in with your with your sound. Okay, just one second. Um, okay, let's go back over to uh, our own individual areas, our own individual sectors, where we wait for Heath to come back. Um, let's start with you, Sam. Okay, let's talk about the you know Federation of Small Business. Let's talk about what's happening in the business community. Uh, what's it like out there? What are you finding? Well, um, I, we, you recently in Prince Line published our national confidence reports that shows that the confidence was going up and we've just got the regional figures through which we're going through now so I'll be sending you some stuff through hopefully um, and the headline is that confidence does seem to be coming back not massively but slowly cautiously and possibly surely I think it is coming back and that's got to be good news because it's been the most horrendous um, the last two or three years and the last 12 months were particularly bad I think um, but confidence might be cautiously returning and I think there's lots of reasons for that not least the fact that um, I, drove, I drive a diesel car and I went to fill up my car the other day. It's 50p cheaper than it was probably six months ago. Now, if that's me as an individual benefiting, what about the businesses who rely massively? If you're in the forest and you're, and you're delivering stuff out on, on, on lorries and so forth, that 50p for every 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 litre is astonishingly different. So there's reasons for confidence in coming back. Just one sort of slightly more um, negative point, though. Um, there are still some people, and I know you've pointed this out in some of your earlier comments, uh, Mark, um, who are still trapped because of the energy issue. And the trap that a lot of businesses found was the middle of last year when things were really, really panicky, people signed up for deals because they wanted to get any deal. They need to sign up for a deal and business will lock themselves in to some horrendous figures. Now, those figures are coming down now, but some businesses are still paying ridiculously expensive deals. So we're trying to encourage the government to encourage the companies to re renegotiate, to be realistic. The, you know, energy costs are coming down some businesses are still paying eye-wateringly sums, but that's it. If we can get that moving and we can get the confidence moving in the right direction, we may end up having a better 2023 than some of us were anticipating. Okay, thanks ever so much for that, Sam. Heath, I'm going to just check that you're, you can hear you nicely now. Can you hear me now? We can hear you great. Okay, let's go over to you then. Let's talk about Cheltenham, Cheltenham bid and uh, what's happening, because we talked about the high streets and stuff before. It's looking good, isn't it, at Cheltenham at the moment? Looking very good. Um, I think nationally there's that narrative that the high streets are failing. However, uh, it's not what we're seeing in Cheltenham. Cheltenham's doing really well. Um, obviously, there's challenges. Um, you're going to get it when you've got uh, quite a large town. But we are doing well. So footfall's up 30% for the first four months of this year um, compared to 2022. And um, we're tracking roughly about the same as 2019, so pre-pandemic um, levels. So... That's phenomenal having that many people in town. Um, I don't know if any of you were in Cheltenham on Saturday, but it was absolutely heaving. Um, we're lucky we've got events going on all the time. So we've got Cheltenham Pride happened last weekend, um, just adding to the vibrant atmosphere of, of the town centre. So when you say 30% up, what kind of figure are we talking about here? It's about a million a month in the town centre visiting. So it's, it's pretty oh, decent wow. figures. Uh, and the voids are, are looking good. Uh, we were really worried about Montpellier at one point and the promenade. That seems to be filling up as well now. Dobby's yeah, just go, moved in. Yeah, if you go back 18 months or so, the promenade was looking quite sorry. Um, but yeah, over the last 18 months, we've managed to get quite a few um, new businesses in there. So yeah, Little Dobby's opening um, a couple of months ago. I'll keep Bennett have come back into town um, on the 4th of May. So um, it's looking phenomenal. Yeah, it's great. And you also, all you guys clubbed together and got rid of the gambling site that was in the old shoe zone as well, going to be going there. Goodness gracious, what were they thinking? Yeah, it just wasn't the right, right business in the right area of town. Um, it, it's, it's quite great seeing businesses and, and local people coming together. Um, if you look at the um, planning portal, all the negative comments on there um, going against that. It's, it's just nice that we've had a community come together and and actually galvanise um, against something that which wouldn't bring any benefits to the town centre. No, I couldn't say more. Uh, thanks ever so much for that. He, congratulations, by the way. I just want to say what a great job Cheltenham Bid does as well. Really is quite outstanding. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go over to you now, Tim. Uh, and I think, hey, mate, I, I think, if you don't mind me saying, I think you've lost a little bit of weight, haven't you? I, I, a bit seven, just over seven stone, Mark, yeah, since last uh, September. Se seven stone? Yes. Oh, amazing. Um, how, I, I, I'm, not gonna take all the, I'm not going to take all the credit for it. Um, late, 
last late last summer I was diagnosed with a um, a condition that linked with my diabetes means I was unable to lose weight. I was piling it on, even if I was eating lettuce, I was putting four pounds on, blew up like the Michelin man. Um, when they finally found it, what it was, I was diagnosed with, uh, it's something that cats get, <laughs> Cushing's disease and Cushing's syndrome. So I, yeah, that was what it was. But they um, they prescribed me um, semaglutide, which is what they're calling now the um, celebrity diet drug. So mm. I inject myself once uh, once a week on a Friday, and um, it suppresses the appetite. If I start eating a meal okay. halfway through it, I'm kind of done. That and a bit more exercise. And of course, as I've lost some weight, I've been able to do a bit more exercise. And then, um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to lose a bit more. Well, you're looking great there, mate. Looking great. Yes, so on that side, you're looking great. But on the flip side, I, I, we were very sorry to hear that you'd, you'd, you'd lost the leadership of the uh, of the Forest Dean Council. That must yeah, be. I guess that's that's democracy, isn't it? Uh, in, in in action. But I mean, look, I, I, I've had six years at the helm. Um, that's a long time, really, for a leader of a council. Um, uh, especially when I've never been in the majority. I've always been a minority leader, reliant on other people's. And and Ian Mean once said to me, and I remember him, I remember him saying it that all political careers end in failure. And I want to be the, the, the exception to his rule on this because mm -hmm. I figure I've lost because of politics, not because of performance. That's why I've lost the role. And, and that's what I'm clinging to. And a bit of a break. And who knows what's around the corner for me politically. So that, that's where I'm going to be. So, yeah. Because the thing about you, you is, uh, and, and, and the council was led by independence, wasn't it, as well? Yeah. A coalition of, of, of different... Yeah, it was, yeah. Up to last September when I um, had to remove a couple of greens from my cabinet, yeah. Was it a nasty election, Tim? It was the worst one I've sat in, Mark, to be honest, yeah. Um, Why was it so vicious? I mean, I heard various rumours and stuff, and, uh, you know, on the ground, it was it, it wasn't pleasant. I th okay. Um, I've had I I've been targeted before by a number of the other parties. Okay, the major parties they targeted me because I was leader of the council. I get it. Cut off the head, the rest will follow, as they say, and all that kind of thing. Um, but this time, with some of the other parties joining in, shall we say, perhaps one that's been more successful, it, it did become a little nasty and personal. And and what I'll say is this: good luck to them. They they've achieved what they wanted to achieve. They're the biggest group. I think over the next four or five years, the public of the Forest of Dean will certainly, and I think the rest of the country will wake up to the fact, and I'm going to say it, that the Green Party are not the cagoule wearing people that like badgers and all that kind of stuff and live in a cottage down their own. These are a drilled and real par uh, political party. And they are determined to do what they want to do. You know, that's great. That's They have their thesis. But for me, I wasn't comfortable with the way they've campaigned, and 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 I will continue to oppose that kind of politics. But it, you know, it is what it is. They've been successful. Good luck to them. I'll phone their new leader up, offer him any help I can, I can give him, but I will continue to hold him to account. Good for you, mate. And I just want to say that the Green Party also won Painswick to go took out the Tory. Yeah, camp. they did. They're, they're on a they're on a roll, mate. And and good luck to them. They're doing that. But I think. I think quite often they get elected on what they don't say compared to what they do say. Okay, well, that's it. It's not as easy to run these things as everybody thinks. That's the no. truth of the matter, isn't it? And that goes me back over to Ian. He used to run all the papers and stuff. Ian, you always make it made it look easy. It's not okay, but uh... well, no, it's not easy as as um, Sam will tell you. Um, you take like Tim. I took the responsibility. Um, very seriously and unfortunately i still do uh I, you you're involved in it uh looking at tim yeah you know, tim is an honest leader you know there's no side to him uh but politics isn't like that and that quote i said to him some years ago is absolutely right um you mentioned earlier we, we we've seen in the last week um some changes up at Tewkesbury. Oh. And um, I live in the amazing, I'm just outside Gloucester, but I'm in Tewkesbury Borough. And, um, you know, change, they've actually now paused the Garden Town project there as a direct result. Now, 
that's politics. But that is a huge project that's going to be over 20 years. New schools, thousands more houses, thousands more jobs. Do you know, Mark, Tewkesbury currently is the third highest growing economy in terms of borough councils in the UK. Why? The great uh, great firms there are there, like Moog, whatever. Uh, there are plans to extend the A46 to Immingham. So for a council to suddenly say, oh, hold on, stop on a huge project. Oh, this is very, it's quite amazing. It's, and also... it's, the, it's not going to, in my view, do them a lot of good. A lot of money has already been spent. Uh, so, you know, that's politics. Ian, I couldn't agree with more. It's actually very worrying as well that you can have a flip like that and suddenly stop and make... Can you imagine if, if, if there was a change of government or councillors in Cheltenham and they suddenly said, no, we're not going to have the cyber park, we're not going to have that stuff, it, and everything changes. we absolutely devastated. And, it, and actually, it, st it stops um, uh, confidence, confidence in investments for business. And in the inward what investment. What do firms think? Moog in a week's time, I've got a big announcement. They're a company based, headquartered in America. They put all their investment into Tewkesbury. Why? Because of the skills. Families have been brought up there. They continue to work there. So you've got to be very careful with making political, political decisions that harm the economic future of an area. Totally agree. We're going to have to move on, guys, unfortunately, because we're running out of time already. We've gone slightly over. So let's go and pick out the stories that caught your eye in this week's punchline, please. I'm going to start with you, Sam. What have we caught from this week's punch, please? We're going to not count Jim because we all know that Jim would be everybody's choice today. Jim Grant passing away. Yeah. So if you don't mind, yeah, we, it goes without saying that Jim would be the number one story. So 100%. And my condolences to his family. Lovely guy, passionate about our ancestors in the Cotswolds. A great miss already. Um, I think the thing I would say, uh, the, the, the one that I liked very much was your walkthrough yesterday of the forum. Um, because, um, um, I mean, what's happening in Gloucester, it, it, you know, it's great to see what's happening in Cheltenham and so forth. So um, Gloucester is, has done very well over the last few years. And the forum is the most visible sign of that. Now, I don't actually walk down that area very often. I drive past it. But on Sunday, I did walk past it. And I was staggered to see how quickly, even from week to week, it's going up. And so for you to be able to go back and put your camera through little holes you're not supposed to put your camera through was terrific for me. So to see the forum coming to life is great. And I think, you know, there's always been a bit of rivalry in the past over the years between Cheltenham and Gloucester particularly. If both are booming, everybody benefits. And, and okay. Cheltenham's doing extremely well. I'm off there tomorrow to see the mousetrap, by the way. He, don't tell me who did the murder. Um, but um, I'm really, really excited for the forum. And your report's great. So I'd recommend anyone to go and see it. OK, thanks ever so much for that. Heath, what have you chosen for this week's punchline, please? They're looking to transform into residential flats. So I think 55 flats. Yeah. Um, it's obviously a very emotive um, building in Gloucester. Um, everyone knows where that Sainsbury site is. Um, it's right in the center of town and of the city. Sorry. And it's it's interesting how they they're going to do it. Looking at the plans, it looks quite sympathetic to the the old design. Um, and I think that's very important, actually. We've got a few buildings in Cheltenham that um, will be going residential um, in the future. And it, it's one of those things where you need to look at the history of that building, uh, the history of the town or the city, and, and make sure that um, the designs are sympathetic to, to what's happened previously. Um, I, I think it's only a good thing that residential is coming back to town centres. Um, there's so much wasted space above Old, old, old shops in the town centre and, and having natural footfall just makes sense, doesn't it? Rather than people coming in through with buses and cars, you've got people who are there. No, totally agree. No, thanks ever so much for that. So, Heath, Tim, what have you chosen from this week's punchline, please? Uh, well, this is the one that's going to split the pan again because obviously Heath and I are both in our 20s, the rest of you are much, much older. Um, and it was actually <laughs> Dave Wood's piece on um, due to popular demand. The Yorkie honeycomb coming back, um, that I, I'm bringing back. And it made me think what I would have liked to be rolled back. And I did think yesterday afternoon when I was reading that, I would kill for a cabana and a can of quattro. 
And I'm just wondering what the rest of the panel would bring back if they had the opportunity from those halcyon days when food tasted of food. We were allowed sugar, we were allowed salt and everything. And a bar of chocolate was bigger than your little finger. OK, we'll come back to that in a second. Well, everyone has a thing. We'll finish on that very thing. Thanks for that, Tim. Ian, what's caught your eye in this week's uh, post? Uh, with Sam on the um, forum. Uh you know, having been involved with the Urban Regeneration Company for some years way back, we had to stop work at the uh, keys and the docks. We should have gone into the city. The RDAs were disbanded, so it's great to see it. And we've talked about online, but, you know, words don't mean much today, I'm afraid. Visuality does. So film, walking around is great. i just done something with the... Uh, Vice Chancellor of the University of the old uh, Debenhams building, which is quite amazing. So I thought what you did was great. It gives people a feel, well, this is fantastic. This is what's going to be like. Thank you very much, Ian. I really appreciate that as well. Okay, uh, just very quickly before we wrap up, I'd bring Quattro back as well. Heath? Just thinking, um, when I was at school, kind of pops were quite popular. Candy Pops, okay. Panda, um, Panda Pops. Sorry, Panda Pops. Sam? There was a very chewy chocolate bar called a Texan, which was really nice. I loved that as a kid. And also there's a bar called Aztec, which I think had rum and raisin in it. Very nice as well. Okay. Ian, last one before we go. Tizer. Tizer. <laughs> I remember that as well. Gosh, showing our age now. Anyway, thanks so much for watching Punchline Talks. If you like the show, please like, share, and subscribe. I'd just like to thank our fantastic sponsors, Hazelwood's Accountants and Business Advisors, and my brilliant panel for getting up so early, covering the papers. No expense was spared, literally. Thanks very much. <laughs> Bye.